We are looking at Ascalus pavia next. This is the red buckeye, pavia, red. So red buckeye. We will see the bottle brush buckeye a little bit later in the semester. This one, another native, a native deciduous shrub. Uh, it's actually hardy zones five to nine. It's in a really fun family, Hippocastanaceae. I'll let y'all figure out how to spell it. <laughs> this one will get anywhere from about five to 10 feet in height, multi-stem shrub. It flowers uh, and has foliage coming out at the same time in the spring, and we generally see it around March to April. You can see real easy to ID by foliage on this one. Our leaf arrangement is what, Eli? Yes, opposite. <laughs> opposite leaves. You can see the reddish coloration to the petiole. And what leaf type would we call this? Carson, gold star. Palmately compound. Palmately compound, five leaflets generally is what we see. And you can see that it does have a serrated margin. Blooms for us again about March, April. This is what we call a racemose panicle, just for your morphological name, pleasure. It's a racemose panicle with red flowers. It actually has red tubular flowers coming out of these bracts here. So what you're seeing here are the bracts that are fairly newly forming bracts. The flower is gonna come out of the bract and you'll have these large panicles of red flowers uh, right now in the spring, coming on soon. As far as tolerances, this is actually one that tolerates wet. So it's one that you can use in a rain garden. It'll also tolerate some drought. So great for mixed border, great for naturalizing, tolerates wet, tolerates dry. It's a major hummingbird attractant. It actually attracts honeybees. So it's a good one for some of our pollinators. Full sun to part shade, I think I said. Ascalus pavia, red buckeye. Oh, the fruit is important on this one. Almost <laughs> forgot. I just got it. Did you stop? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 